Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel Ordinary Data Scientist where we talk about data science. So friends, I hope you had uh, revised the concept discussed in the previous videos like the percentile, quartiles, interquartiles and range, mean, mid and modes. Uh, I hope you now you have a good understanding of those concepts, right? So let's quickly cover few other concepts also that are required to understand the data uh, data variance and all, okay? So what is variance as such? Now let's say if in your class one student, let's say student A got 30% marks, okay? And the topper got 95% marks. So we will see that the, the gap is huge the weakest student and the most intelligent students has a huge variance in their score. This is not the very ideal case scenario. Now, if you had another case like where the, let's say topper scored 95, but the lowest score in the class was just 75%. Here, the variance is just 25 percentage point you will say this is a very balanced class. So the variability will help us to understand not just the difference between a topper and the and the let's say weaker student, but also how data is spread across the middle point. You know, let's say this middle point is the average of class, average of your class. Topper is somewhere here and the weaker is somewhere here. Some students are here, 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 some students here, here, you know, something like that. So what is the what is the deviation of the students from the middle point or the average will also come under the concept of variability because it's very important to understand the data spread. Okay, so these are the concepts that we will uh, that we will understand in this video. Okay, cool. Now, the first thing that we uh, want to understand is your deviation from the mean. Okay, so these are the five data points that you have 5, 9, uh, 16, 17, 18, and you want to calculate the deviation from the mean. Okay, so the first thing that you will do is calculate the mean, which is your 13. So 13 will be somewhere here. Let's say 13. Now, somewhere let me plot it. Let's say 13 is somewhere here and then you have all the data points like A, B, C, D, E, F, let's say and this is your average. Now the C is deviated whatever C minus 30. Similarly B A has deviated you know B minus 30. A has deviated A minus 30 you know something like that. Similarly D deviated D minus 13, E deviated E minus 13, and so on and so forth. We can calculate the deviation from the mean. Okay, we can calculate that. So here we are doing the same only that 5 deviated 5 minus 13, which is minus 8. That means it's below the mean by 8 units. Yeah, 5 was somewhere here and 13 was here. So it has a 8 unit gap. Similarly, the 18 has five units gap, but it went beyond the mean. Yeah, the closest the closest point to the mean is something this point, the 16, which is very close to the central point or the average compared to other data points. So this is what we are calculating using the deviation, you know, which is helping us to understand the nature of other data points. Okay. The first thing that we will remember is the mean absolute deviation. Okay, mean absolute deviation. This is the first thing that we'll remember. This is nothing but MAD. Okay, so as I said, here it will be A minus 13, B minus 13, 13 minus D, somewhere, somewhere like that. So it's nothing but your A minus 13 mod you will take the mod it can be positive negative but it should be always be the mod next will be mod b minus 13 up to up to your 
mod let's say f minus 13 all those sum and then you will divide by n how many numbers are there so this is nothing but your mu minus x only or x minus mu whatever you write okay so i can write that m ed mad i can write that mad is equal to sigma of x i minus mu and then you take the mod divided by n yeah i can write the formula like that that x i minus mu mu is nothing but your uh, uh, average and then you take the mod of that you do this step for all i's i is equal to 1 to n and then you divide by n this is your mean absolute because we are taking absolute and deviation because you are subtracting it from actual number so this is the first concept mean absolute deviation mad okay once we understand the mad there are two other important topic that we need to remember is variance and standard deviation okay now variance if you remember if it is population variance we represent it by sigma square and if it is sample variance we represent it by small s square okay as this chapter is most related to population analysis the descriptive statistics so we'll talk about the population on the sigma but the formula remains same okay so the variance so your sigma square is your x i minus mu and then you will do the square of that divided by n and you this repeat this for all i so x i minus mu square and then you sum everything then divide by n okay okay this is this is called variance and it's denoted by sigma square for population and uh, s square for your sample so people if you had noticed the unit of mean median mode mean median mode even range everything will be in the same scale let's say if i'm talking about salary my unit will be indian rupees or even your dollars only if i say what is the range of the google salary you will say 54 lakhs rupees what is the median of the salary you might say 25 lakh rupees mean let's say 30 uh, mean was 12 lakh rupees right so all was like rupees 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 but if you consider here variance will be your rupees square or your dollar square because this xi is a rupees minus your average will be some rupees and then you will square take take the square so it will be like a square so that's why variance is not very much uh, useful in real life actually because it has different uh, you need to measure that's why we'll take the standard deviation which will have the same unit and represented by sigma which is nothing but the same formula same formula but now we will take the under root now it will give me the same unit indian rupees dollar or whatever but it will give me the same scale same unit so this is what is mostly used in our uh, statistics uh, also that sigma what is standard deviation okay so please remember this that the sigma is root under of the sigma square or variance only okay now standard deviation and uh, the variance where do we generally use it so there are two theorems you know which is which help us to apply the standard deviation method when one is called empirical rule and one is called shear waves theorem uh, we'll go through this theorem but before that let's understand one thing let's say you have the data spread across the axis like this okay something like this your data points are here there here there and all and you know 
and your mean is somewhere here okay now now you want to calculate that hey how many data points are there from from let's say mu plus x this is let's say x and how many data points are there from mu plus y or something like that you just want to see that okay if this is my acceptance range that from the average as i said the average is 4 kg you can go up to 3.9 to 4.1 so you want to see that how many cricket bats the producer are giving to you you know in this range how many data points are there okay so this this is the range that we will calculate using the empirical and Chavez theorem so let's first talk about the empirical rule so to understand the empirical uh, rule let's quickly understand the normal distribution first so this is the curve and then this is normal distribution normal distribution curve okay normal distribution curve is that this is your number line actually this is your number line and this y axis will give you the frequency okay that means that this data point this data point has the highest frequency this is probably the mode of that whatever it x it can be x x1 whatever but let's say this is the data point which has the highest frequency okay so normal distribution the characteristic of normal distribution is it's symmetrical across this vertical line it means this will be the mirror image of left hand side so this is your normal distribution we'll study more about this curve uh, in in subsequent uh, lecture but as of now let's understand this is a normal distribution curve okay. now the empirical rule says that if the central point is your mu okay which is nothing but your uh, average if central point is your mu and let's say this is your another data point this is your another data point and this is your another data point similarly at the same distance this is another data point another data point another data point and these are data point can be represented at sigma two sigma and three sigma similarly here sigma two sigma and three sigma the empirical rule says that the area from this sigma to this sigma if i have this area okay this area the white dotted area from mu plus minus sigma your 68 percent data points will lie there in this region 68 percent data points will lie here only in this region yeah similarly minus 2 sigma if i say 95 percent data points will fall under that bucket means your from here to here the red line from here to here and then mu plus minus 3 sigma 99.7 percentage data points will fall under this only 3 sigma to 3 sigma this is what empirical rule says okay if the data is normally distributed it's very very important that the data should be normally distributed now what is normal distribution we will read more in detail but as of now let's say normal distribution is a bell shaped curve it's a bell shaped curve which is symmetric across this uh, vertical line which will be symmetric across the vertical line okay bell shaped curve now that this is the empirical empirical theorem that if the data is normally distributed then for this range mu plus minus sigma 68 data points will fall under this range 95% will fall under this range 95% will fall under 2 sigma to 2 sigma 
and 99.7 will fall under 3 sigma to 3 sigma remaining 0.3 will fall somewhere here okay that's the empirical theorem now let's quickly uh, quickly see one example okay so i think yeah this is the example a company produces a lightweight valve that is specified to weight this much gram this should be the weight of that particular valve okay so your if i translate this into a business problem you will say that mu is equal to 1365 gram okay 1365 gram unfortunately because of imperfection in the manufacturing process uh, not all valves produce weights exactly this much yeah that that will be definitely some error okay in fact weights of the valve produced are normally distributed so this is important that th this is normally distributed okay with a mean weight of this much gram so this is your mean weight that whatever uh, you know whatever getting produce the products their mean is at least 1365 gram and the standard deviation is 294 gram so i'll come here i'll say that the standard deviation is equal to 294 gram yeah 294 gram within what range of weight should approximately 95 percent of the wall weights fall so i want that 95 percent data point should fall under what weight okay now if this is normal distributed i can draw this curve and the data point here will be 1365 this is mu now 95 percent data should be in what range now as, a, as we know that 95 percent as per the theory the 90 percent range will be mu plus minus 2 sigma that means this range so which is nothing but your mu plus minus 2 sigma okay so the right point the right hand side point will be 365 plus 2 into 294 and your left point will be 365 minus 294 okay you can do the calculation and get the numbers here so this is the range i will check the uh, solution here so for example this is the range 365 plus minus 294 that means this this is the range that you will get the 95 percent of the weight okay so this is the range now let's quickly go through other problem also like approximately 16 percent of the weight should be more than what value now let's consider the normal distribution as I said, normal distribution is your uh, symmetry across the this vertical line. Okay. Now, if I say that hey, this range covers your sixty-eight percent values. If I say this, this is your sixty-eight percent. So mu plus minus sigma gives you sixty-eight percent of the range. So can I say that? 34% here and 34% here because symmetry. Now, if you apply this logic, people just zoom in here a little bit, you will literally start seeing the numbers here, right? So, example, this is your 34%, and this is your 13%, and the remaining will have something. So, remaining is nothing but if I calculate the remaining here. It's nothing but 50% minus 34% which is nothing but your 16% the remaining this sigma and above this range just write it here and this is what we need that at least 16% should be more than that had it been said that 16% should be less than that we would have considered this range
because it's saying more than that that means we have to find this data point so that it's more than that yeah so let me quickly repeat what i just said this divide 50 50 percent both the sigma has like 68 percent range but 34 percent 34 percent and if i minus the 50 percent from 34 i'll get this remaining 16 percent here okay, in this range so the data point will be your mu plus sigma and that data point above above that there will be at least 16 percent uh, weights or data points yeah cool another problem statement approximately 0.05 percent of weight should be less than what value now very important to understand the language that the 0.1.5 percent should be less than what okay so I'll come back here let's take the same example at least 0.15 percent should be less than what now when i say less i need to care about the left hand side of the graph now we know that from here to here somewhere sigma there will be at least 99.7 percent is from here to here that means that remaining one from here to here there will be at least 0.3 percent that means as it is symmetric 0.1.5 percent will be here and 0.1 five percent will be here as it said lesser than what point so we need to find this if it had said bigger than what then we would have find this point but now we need to find the point you know where we have at least 0.15 percent lesser data point so we'll find mu minus three sigma this is the data point yeah so people uh, all this calculation you just need to think very basic Math, mathematics you need to apply just that you need to plus minus some reason and then probably need to find always remember that if it says greater than something you will talk about right hand side if it says lesser than something you will talk about left hand side okay that's the only thing so we'll, we'll talk more examples uh, in in future uh, sessions but let's quickly cover the another theorem Kavish theorem. So people as I said this theorem empirical theorem is very important that the data is normally distributed you know it should be very symmetric uh, towards the middle point it should be very symmetric towards the middle point which is mu you know, it should be very symmetric but this is a very ideal case scenario and this generally doesn't happen every time so for that we have a new theorem called C ways in this theorem the data can have any shape literally any shape it can have multiple maxima multiple minima and all it can have any shape okay so the theorem says that no matter what is the shape no matter and it can be applied to normal distribution also but for normal distribution we already have a very standard uh, method or theorem that's why we follow the empirical theorem but the same uh, Chavez theorem can also be applied there. This theorem says that that at least one minus one divided by k square values will fall within plus minus k standard deviation. You know, at least one minus one by k square values will fall within plus minus k distribution. Okay. So earlier we were seeing that you know the, like empirical we wrote that mu plus minus sigma 68 percent we knew that value right two sigma I said 95 percent mu plus minus three sigma I said 99.7 percent this is this is the empirical theorem but the Chavez theorem says that if you take any plus minus k sigma if you take any plus minus k sigma then you will have at least one minus one by k square data points you will have at least this many data points this is what the Chavez theorem says okay 
Now we'll see one practical example. In a in a computing industry, the average age of professional employees tends to be younger than many other business professionals. Yeah, that's true. Suppose the average age of professional employed by a particular computer firm is 28. So the average is your 28. So let's write it down. Your average age is equal to 28 years. Okay. With a standard deviation of 6 years. Very good. So we'll say that the standard deviation is equal to 6 years. A histogram of professional employees' ages with this form reveals that the data are not normally distributed. So this is important that the data is not normally distributed. So that means we cannot apply the empirical theorem. But they find that the, uh, that the range is for 20s and few workers are more than 40. Now it, it automatically says that apply this theorem to determine within what range of ages would at least 80% of the workers will fall. 80% of the workers will fall. Okay. So we need to find the range between that 80% worker within the range that 80% worker should fall. That means we need to find uh, if let's say this is your curve again it's normal not normally distributed you need to find the data point let's say x1 and x2 between that 80 percent your data point should fall okay cool now can i can i make some assumption that somewhere here mu will be there I just making an example or assumption and let's say k is here and similarly k is here so can I say that mu and there is a k value which will give me this range and where I'll 80% values okay so I want to say that hey the mu plus minus the k sigma should be equal to i write the formula first 1 by 1 minus k square and this is giving me the 0.8 or 80 percent so now let me solve this part first that 1 minus 1 by k square should be 0.8 and then 1 by k square should be equal to 0.2 that means the k square should be equal to 5 that means k is equal to 2.24 i want to try a k you know in such that this range mu plus minus k is giving me 80 percent of the data this is the 80 percent of the data so i applied that logic and found the value of k now to find the range it will be plus minus k sigma that means the right hand side point will be plus k sigma and the right left hand side point will be k sigma just put the values 28 and 6 28 plus 2.24 into 6 and here it will be 28 minus 2.24 into 6 you will get the range inside this range x1 this is nothing but your x2 and x1 so inside this range your 80 percent data points will fall yeah so that's how you can apply the Chevy's theorem very very interesting to understand and i see the, the most of the use case of this theorem will be in the in the production uh, industrial engineering or some other kind of branches but we also try to observe the data you know using normal distribution curve and all okay so very very important concept people empirical and chevy's theorem uh, I'll, I'll request that please re practice few other examples also and try to understand the normal curve 
and the area under normal curve like at what point it will be how much percentage or not let's take a pause here in the next video we'll cover the remaining topics the the similar kind of analysis on group data and then we'll see some of the shape of the curve uh, skewness and all uh, but please revise the concept discussed in this video and the previous video and i'll see you in the next video